Stirring cocktails is what we're gonna be doing whenever you're thinking of very spirit forward cocktails. So your favorite old fashions, Manhattan, Sazeracs, are all gonna be stirred in a mixing glass before they're served in their glassware. You're gonna see in other modules how we're shaking cocktails, building highballs and spritzes, but this is really the path into fairly boozy cocktails. So we're gonna get into all of that while looking at all the specific ingredients we're using, the garnishes, and the glassware we'll be serving into it. Our goals with stirring cocktails are both chilling and diluting it. So what we're gonna be doing is stirring from anywhere from 15 to 20 seconds, which will get the cocktail nice and cold, make it really pleasant. Diluting the cocktail is essentially watering it down. By the time you're done stirring your cocktail, you will have added anywhere between an ounce to an ounce and a half of cold water to your drink. So this is why the ice that you're using in your cocktail is very important. It's really imparting flavor into your cocktail. So when we are stirring, we are trying to pace it out, think of the timing, and make sure that we have the most balanced cocktail at the end of it. A lot of times in cocktail recipe books, you'll see recipes written out as vigorously shaking the drink. This is to aerate and integrate the cocktail ingredients really intensely, especially with high acidity or high sugar content. That is not necessary for stirred cocktails. They're typically all booze or all very delicate and gentle ingredients. Sometimes a little bit of sugar, but we're really just gently stirring them. Nobody is vigorously stirring anything. Essentially what we're trying to do is integrate all the ingredients gently, make sure it becomes a balanced cocktail, chilling it, diluting it, so you can have a very nice, smooth, boozy drink. My recommendation is to grab a mixing glass, some ice and water, and start practicing at home. It does take some time, but eventually you'll get the hang of it. What we're gonna be doing is filling up our mixing glass with a little bit of water. Think about most of your classic cocktails, two to three ounces of spirit, and then we'll add it with ice. So I'll go ahead and measure this out so you can really see what it would normally feel like when we're stirring a cocktail. We'll do three ounces of water. And then again, you wanna fill your mixing glass pretty close to the top with ice. We're trying to get it as cold as possible, and we're gonna need a lot of ice to do it. That one. So, the way we're gonna do this, by grabbing our bar spoon, we're gonna put the back of the spoon up against the inside of the glass. Let it go all the way to the bottom of the glass, and you really wanna keep it on the bottom of the glass. A lot of people tend to do this, uh, I don't know if I'd call it a technique, but they would pick it up and try to get the ice up and down. It's noisy, it's not super cute, and it does not achieve your goal with making cocktails. So what we're trying to do is create as quiet of a stir as possible, make it look seamless, make it look easy. But the way that we're doing that is with that back of the spoon up against the inside of the glass. Again, all the way to the bottom, and then just let it stir. The way that we are holding the spoon, I typically pinch towards the top with my thumb and my pointer finger. My middle and ring finger are gonna wrap around the spoon, and that's really what's toggling back and forth. The thumb and the pointer finger is just to keep the spoon steady in place and make it easier for you to stir. Eventually, over time, it's just gonna be quicker and quicker, and you're eventually gonna get the hang of it. Since we're just using water, you can practice this for as long as you want, keep trying things, and you're not wasting anything. You're just gonna have a really nice cold glass of water at the end of this. Another thing to do while you're in this process, you can keep adding ice to it so you can keep testing it out, but this is a really great way to start practicing your stir at home. A great classic cocktail to try out at home is the Boulevardier. It is a riff on a classic Negroni, but we're gonna incorporate some bourbon rather than the gin. This is uh, one that really hits all the marks for a great stirred cocktail. It's boozy, it's a little bitter, it's spirit forward, but it's very balanced, and it's a smooth, delicious cocktail. We're gonna start off by incorporating all the ingredients into the mixing glass. We're gonna build from the smallest ingredients to the largest. This is just so if we make a mistake, it's better to start over after a little bit of vermouth has been made into a mistake than to waste the bourbon. You don't wanna waste any good bourbon. Kind of the whole MO of this course. So we're gonna start off with our sweet vermouth, go into the Campari, and then to our Elijah Craig bourbon. Measuring out three quarters of an ounce of Dolan Rouge into the mixing glass. We 
we have three quarters of an ounce of Campari. This is a bitter orange liqueur, very classic, used in a lot of classic cocktails. We are going to incorporate this into there because it adds that little tinge of bitterness that is uh, nice and a nuanced element of cocktails that people really enjoy. Again, three quarters of an ounce. Campari is also gonna add a bright red tinge of color to the drink. When selecting the base spirit for your Negroni or your Boulevardier, you really wanna think about what the end goal is. So different gins are gonna bring out different qualities in your cocktail, whether it's London dry, American style, Japanese gin, same goes with whiskey. If we go with rye whiskey, especially a bonded one, it might bring out more spice notes, autumnal notes, things that are very woodsy. Bourbon for me brings out little elements of coconut. It's still woodsy, but it's very round and really bright, which is what we're gonna go for today. So we're gonna use Elijah Craig, and we're gonna measure out an ounce and a half of bourbon into our mixing glass. For some folks, a Negroni or a Boulevardier is a classic one to one to one ratio. They are wrong. Uh, no, I'm kidding, they're not. But this is my preferred recipe. And since you're on this course with me, you might as well just follow along. Next up is ice. We're gonna fill this mixing glass to the top. Boulevardiers are a classic cocktail that can be served up or on the rocks. Personally, I prefer mine on the rocks. We're gonna serve ours specifically over a large cube, which is gonna add a very nice element to your cocktail. We're gonna serve our Boulevardier over a large ice cube to elevate your cocktail game. Then we're gonna use the skills that we learned in trying to find out how to single stir and do that to this cocktail. Again, it's all about pacing and timing. I usually stir for about 15 seconds, but a great way to know is if you keep your fingers at the bottom of the mixing glass, you can see when it's getting nice and cold. You'll see a good amount of fog on it, it kinda gets frosted up. Those are all good signs that it's chilling, it's diluting, doing what it needs to do. So again, back of the spoon, up against the inside of the glass, all the way to the bottom. You never let it leave the bottom of the glass. We're gonna be stirring this again for about 15 seconds. And you can start to already see the mixing glass frost up. At that point, your cocktail's ready to go. And all we're gonna do is strain it. To strain your cocktails, you can either use a julep strainer Personally, I reach towards a Hawthorne strainer for straining my stirred cocktails. It tends to hug the glass and make sure that all of the ice stays in there. We're gonna strain it over the large cube, keeping it nice and elegant. And then the final step is the garnish. We're gonna go ahead and express a little bit of orange on top, which is gonna bring out all the bitter orange flavors in the Campari. And that is a classic Boulevardier. So this is not something that you necessarily have to do at home, but a really nice technique to get into is double stirring. This is something that we do at bars a lot, making sure that we can keep up with the volume and the amount of orders that we're getting. This is essentially what it sounds like. We'll be stirring two different cocktails in two different mixing glasses, so they'll be ready around the same time. What we're gonna be making is a kind of random classic called an Adelita, as well as a classic Manhattan. We'll be serving them both up, and we even have our glasses chilling right now as we're doing it. So don't forget to always do that for any cocktails that are served up in a coupe or a Nick and Nora glass. We're gonna start off by building out our ingredients. We're not gonna start off with any ice, because we don't wanna dilute the cocktails as we're building it. We'll add ice right when we're ready. We can do whichever one we want first, but we'll start with the Adelita. Again, starting with our smallest ingredients first, we'll start off with a little bit of grenadine, which is essentially a pomegranate syrup. We'll only be putting a bar spoon of syrup in there, which is all we need, because it's quite sweet on its own. I typically hold the spoon right above the glass and just let it start dripping in. Then we get into our other ingredients. 
Natalita is sort of a tequila martini, but it has a little brightness because of the grenadine. It's a nice little touch of sweetness that makes it a really approachable and kind of low ABV cocktail. Next up is an ounce of Dolan Dry Vermouth. After that, we have our Koki Americano. Koki Americano, very similar to the style of vermouth, has a bit more earthiness, a little bit of bitterness, and even herbaceousness. We mentioned earlier that stirred cocktails tend to be a bit more boozy. However, a lot of stirred cocktails can feel really clean and bright. This is a great example of that. Finally, our tequila. You can go towards a Blanco tequila, a Reposado. For this specific cocktail, because of kind of the temperature outside, I'm in the mood for a Reposado tequila. It's a bit more warming, it kind of hugs you a little bit. It's very cozy. Cozy tequila. And while that's sitting there, we're not gonna add ice just yet. We'll start building our Manhattan. We're gonna start off with two dashes of bitters. Just make sure you fill your dropper up to the top. Classically, Manhattans follow a 2-1-2 recipe. Two ounces of whiskey, one ounce of vermouth, and two dashes of bitters. That's a great formula to move forward with any Manhattan riff either. Next up, an ounce of Dolan Rouge, which is gonna be your sweet vermouth. Finally, Manhattans classically utilize rye whiskey. Because we have a lot of sweet vermouth in there, you want something that has a little bit more bite to it to cut through that. So rye whiskey does a really great job of creating this spiced and woodsy cocktail in the end. We'll be using Rittenhouse Rye, which is a bottled and bond whiskey, meaning that it's 50% alcohol or 100 proof, meaning it's gonna be high heat or high alcohol content. We're gonna be measuring out two ounces. And then all you have to do is fill up these mixing glasses with ice, start stirring, and then we get to enjoy our cocktails. We are filling up these glasses as far to the top as possible without ice spilling over. And then it's the double stirring. So this is a matter of getting comfortable with your right-handed and left-handed stir. Again, it takes time, but it's a nice skill to have once you get it down. Essentially what we're gonna do is the same skill in both glasses. We're gonna do the same thing we did with the single stir. Back of the spoon, up against the inside of the glass, and then all the way to the bottom. And we never want it to leave the bottom of the glass. Essentially what we're doing is creating two rotational stirs in there. And then once it starts to get going, it feels very easy. You get to just let it stir, and you go for about 15 seconds until the cocktail is nice and chilled and nice and diluted. Again, we really wanna make sure that the spoon is doing all the stirring, that you're not flailing your arms around, making it overly complicated or cumbersome. It should look cute, you should look good doing it. It's part of the tea. Once you are done, you can go ahead and take your chilled glassware, dump out the water and ice, and start to serve your cocktails. Once you've dumped out your ice and water, you're ready to go. We have nice chilled glassware for your cocktails. We're gonna go ahead and strain out our Manhattan, get that off the ice, especially because it doesn't require any more dilution. And we can also strain out our Adelita. Beautiful pink color ready to be enjoyed. Definitely a classic worth knowing about. Final step for both of these is the garnish. 
So as we know, Manhattans classically have a nice dark cherry skewered on top. We will stick with that, but we're gonna add one more element today. Adelitas classically have a lemon expression to add a little bit of citrus oils to the top of the drinks. We want to do that for the Manhattan as well. Lemon expressions on Manhattans are incredible. It adds a nice layer of nuance. Highly encourage you to start doing that. We do not need two separate peels to accomplish this. There's plenty of oils in one peel of lemon. As we learned in the garnishing module, you're gonna go ahead and put the thumb on the bottom, pointer and middle fingers on top, simply express lemon. It's that simple. You have two classic cocktails ready to be enjoyed. We have an Adelita and your classic Manhattan. There you have it. Easy does it. Nobody says that. Nobody says easy does it. Easy sleazy.